It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show, and I uh, wanted to uh, uh, get into the big question. That's right, it's big question time here on the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Uh, everybody's been filling in since uh, DJ Lunchbox on hiatus to Bear Country, trying to get even. So with us, uh, trying uh, to, to, to fill in those shoes, uh, what the question of the week is, Eamon. <laughs> What's wrong, Eamon? <laughs> Lunchbox is... Um, uh, big question. Uh, I had a big question this week that I wanted to ask you guys. Uh, to me, WWE for the past couple years has been going through a bit of an experiment. Now, we've had some points in time where, you know, the champion hasn't been the main focus. There's a point where The Rock held the championship. He wasn't on the show every week. He wasn't the main focus in storylines. Daniel Bryan got injured, and we had a couple months where there was no champion, and there was a lot of, you know, different focus. Then we had Brock Lesnar win the belt, and for the past nine months or so, you know, no big champion uh, focus. Uh, the question that I have uh, for this week's big question, does – Having a is it important to have a main heavyweight champion on your show weekly? Do you think it helps the product? Do you think it hurts the product? What are your thoughts? Okay, um, if they build the lower card better, if they if they build that mid card so they can so that whole aspect of hey the champion isn't here is washed away. Like what they do, what they're doing right now with uh, the intercontinental championship would be good. If the car, if it didn't lead up to WrestleMania where they do have a main title on the line. I feel like they're trying to build up the intercontinental title, but they're doing it on the wrong pay-per-view. And they're doing it on, I mean, because right now the inter, the the titles, the Intercontinental Championship and the U.S. titles, even though John Cena is in one of those, are being built pretty damn good, and probably better than the Undisputed Championship. And that's just my view, but I I think if anything, it, it could work, mm -hmm. and that's just what I think. I think it's an interesting opportunity for them to reframe those titles, much like what they've been doing. Uh, I think I, I agree very well going into WrestleMania. I don't think it's required. I, I like that. Again, it's also retrained the fans who would expect, like, well, if I don't have a world or WWE champion at the end of my show, <coughs> if, if I'm, say, at a house show or something, um, then, you know... Uh, it, it, you know, then I feel kind of gypped, you know, like it feels like, like, like it feels like a weird show if you don't have the world title defense. Right. Mm -hmm. And we had, we, we answered that question by having a world and WWE and ECW champion for a time. Sorry. Mm -hmm. I just watched that WrestleMania when that happened. Um, so yeah, again, it's a retraining that I think in the long run, no, no, if you're coming from I watched Attitude where this was the thing and we did, they defended that every week on Raw to what we have now, um, I go to like watching UFC programming is the title defended every show you watch of UFC, which, you know, to point, no, you know, when I'm talking week to week is they have their weekly programming as well, of course, but I know it's a little different animal. Um, no, I, I, I don't think it is because I think... We're returning to there's a lot of different stories happening, and actually, the story that doesn't have anything to do with the title has mostly ruled Raw for the last two weeks, and that being Raw, uh, Rollins and Orton. And I think SmackDown is also proving that because most of the storylines there, because we don't oh, yeah, get a lot of guys on there, is you know Rollins, uh, uh, you know Rollins and all the other guys on that, and again doesn't have to do with titles. More just storylines. Getting a little repetitious, but that would have happened with the Bell and Lays. Um, so, yeah, no. Kind of, kind, of, kind of another side question with that. Uh, the, one of the big theories was that with Lesnar not defending the belts all the time, do you, that it validates the belt more. Do you think that's the case? 
Yes, it, it, and it does. They're trying to make it feel as important as a UFC title feels. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, you have to remember, around 1996, we got spoiled. Mm-hmm. We got spoiled as hell as wrestling fans. Because before then, it would be a big deal when the champion was even on the show, let alone wrestling, let alone defending. Mm-hmm. Like, the Attitude Era, because there was so much competition between WWE and WCW, you had to defend the title at least once a month. Mm-hmm. You, had, you had to have the champion on all the time. You had to have the, the champion cutting promos. I think they just now realized that we can get back to the point where if the champion isn't on all the time, it's going to be that much bigger of a deal when he is on. And that and the the best thing for this, like, and I don't know if it's going to be a trend that carries, because you have a guy who can show up representing your champion. Mm-hmm. You have Paul Heyman. Brock could be away for eight months, but if Paul Heyman came out every couple of weeks and cut a promo saying, hey, guess what? Brock's still better than all these fuckers here. It would still feel like, oh, yeah, he really is. Like, Brock is still important and very dominant. Like, I, w- I think if if the next person to beat him is, like, Cena, if Cena took some time off. And he took, like, he, can- he only showed up every couple of weeks on Raw. Like, maybe he'll wrestle in a dark match or something. That's, you know, for the fans, so the fans don't feel gypped. But have him show up sporadically on Raw. Like, have that be a thing. Like, have that be where, like, the, the, the champion realizes that, wait, this is a prize. and Technically, I'm a prize fighter. Like, I fight for the belt. Like, Kevin Owens is doing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, Kevin Owens on NXT is doing it perfectly. I mean, he came in, he wrestled one match, and he said... All right, I want um, I want Sami Zayn, and I'm not going to wrestle if it's not a title match, because I fight for a reason. I fight for a purpose. Every match he's had so far has been for a specific purpose. One of them happened to be because Alex Riley just pissed him off, but still, every match he's had in the NXT has been for a purpose. Yeah. Like, and I I think that I think it really helps, and plus, it it makes the main t- the the undercard titles, the main titles on the show. Like, technically, when Brock's not on Raw, Rusev and, Bar- and Barrett are the lead title holders. That That's just how it, how the hierarchy works, so it does help. Okay, cool. Bobby, uh, Bobby, do you have any thoughts on this? Uh, yeah, I, I, I hearken it back to the days of Hulk Hogan. When Hulk Hogan was champion, he pretty much, I mean... At, Besides, like, the occasional main event where he played somebody not that strong, um, Hulk Hogan would – you would have to pay to see Hulk Hogan fight. And that's kind of like what we're getting at with Brock Lesnar now. The, 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 having the champion only around every once in a while gives it, like, that big fight feel. Mm-hmm. You know? Like, this guy com- only comes around every once in a while. You have to earn your shot to face him, you know? Um, and, and I think with him being gone, though, it does bring – like that prestige back to the Intercontinental title or the U.S. title, um, it, it puts them more in, in the spotlight, I think. So that, that's good, too, for both of those titles. Cool. Uh, to kind of, uh, just, just one quick thing. To kind of go along with what Bobby said, that, like, what Bobby said is absolutely right. I completely agree with it 100%. But if Rollins was to force Brock to have a match on Raw for the title because of the cash-in, that would be huge. Because I don't think Brock, would happen on Raw, though. I, but if it did, like, because Raw is the unexpected show. It's the live show. Yeah. Like, and because Brock hasn't had a match on Raw since probably 2004. Yeah, I, fine. Yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like, I feel like if there was going to be a cash on Brock, they might want to take advantage of it on Raw because it, it has that Ziggler feel to it. Like, when Ziggler cashed in the night after, like, Everyone was like, oh my god, Ziggler's cashing in. Everyone tune in. Like, mm-hmm. Definitely. Uh, Matt Carlins, any thoughts? Um, I mean, the whole Lesnar thing is an uh, issue of convenience. Not even convenience, circumstance, maybe. I mean, even when The Rock had the title for that little bit, he did not necessarily disappear. I mean, he wasn't on every single week, but he was... 
he was a pretty consistent presence. He wasn't ducking out for months and months on end, which is what you get when Brock is doing it. The, I, I mean, I think the point is that once Brock drops that belt to whoever the next day is, Reigns, Rollins, I mean, then all of this will revert back to the way it was um, before um, Lesnar won the belt, and you'll start seeing the champ on TV every single week, and, you know, whether they get back into the habit of having him in a singles match every week, probably that would be too much. Mm -hmm. um, so, I, it, it's cool now, but is it a is it a shifting of philosophy on WWE's part? I don't necessarily think so. I think once that belt is off of Lesnar, things are going to go back to the way they were, and it will be fine that way too, hopefully. And it's pretty cool this way now. Okay. Um, I, I think it's an interesting scenario. I do think it has validated the belt a bit more than in the past in the fact that it has made these times that Lesnar has defended more of a big deal and, and much more important as opposed to just defending on every pay-per-view. Um, I, I do appreciate that. Uh, I don't know if it's improved the actual product uh, because I think of that period between Night of Champions and the Royal Rumble – uh, where Lesnar really had no TV time, no nothing. He was pretty much just pr pretty much gone um, uh, until like about the month leading up to the Rumble. And I I think back and I I don't remember a lot of really phenomenal stuff coming from that period. Um, I I think it can be done well. I don't know if. There's certain things I think WWE does with the amount of programming they have that maybe doesn't facilitate that. Um, because I think kind of like Sorg mentioned, they, they have a tendency to kind of repeat themselves and 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 and, and that kind of stuff. But um, I think it has a lot of potential. Uh, uh, and maybe we'll see You know, if Roman is to win the belt Sunday and and hold it like a, like a traditional on-screen champion – see how that works out and see if there's any difference. But I, I think it'll be interesting. So, yeah. Awesome. That's where I kick in and let you know if you have any opinions on this, uh, as, you know, as Brock Lesnar, uh, you know, the champ not being on really kind of affected uh, what's going on with WWE. Uh, and this week you can uh, win with that. If you use the hashtag on Twitter, uh, hashtag uh, WMS Big Question, and you follow us at Mayhem Show on the Twitter, uh, we're actually giving away IWC's Night of the Superstars 3. Uh, Night of the Superstars 4 is happening in Meadville, PA. Uh, go to IWCWrestling.com for info on that, including... Hall of Fame inductee by that time, Kevin Nash is going to be there. Ric Flair, all the tickets to meet and greet and get uh, 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 autographs with Ric Flair are sold out. But you can still have an opportunity to meet and greet with Kevin Nash uh, and everybody else on that card. Uh, but this is one from last year. I'm going to give away free for uh, uh, people that uh, uh, give us an answer to the big question. Includes Bret Hart on there, D.H. Smith, uh, A.J. Styles versus Anthony Meats, which was a tremendous match. Crazy good match. The Steiner brothers are on this one. Matt Stryker, your teacher. Matt Taven, who's ripping it up in uh, Ring of Honor right now. Don Castle, who, who's popping up over yeah. here as well. Yeah. Uh, all kinds <laughs> of fun H, stuff. R -O -H. Uh, so go check it out. Uh, and please hashtag WMS Big Question. Now, last week, we had the question of... Chief, uh, what was our question? I had it over here. Uh, sorry. What is your uh, what is your WWE Hall of Fame criteria? Which I think was Riz's question. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and we did get one answer that really stuck out to me, at, at least. Uh, this is from New Age Glamazon, who we we converse with a lot on there. She's awesome. Um, says, uh, uh, "Are you William Regal? No. Okay. How good was your feud with William Regal? <laughs> <laughs> nice." Get an bravo. That's, bravo. A good that's good so, she'll be getting a copy of last week's pick that's super indie six got a lot of uh, a lot of names on there as well uh so uh go check that out and please participate a winner could be you uh so with that hey uh you know there's a lot of stuff going on pro wrestling tees.com uh actually both things uh, pro wrestling tees.com and spreadshirt uh, there's a couple different ways you can get some mayhem wear uh, as it were 
Um, and so somebody plugged something today. Was what, what was going on? I, I saw something briefly. Riz, you were involved with that, I think. Maybe. Are you muted? Uh oh. We can't hear Riz. We can't uh -oh. hear what him. I'm muted. Okay. <laughs> what What did I miss? I, I I saw some tweets coming so, through. You asked me a question. Nothing made sense in my head. All right. So what I did was I wanted a new Mayhem shirt. By the way, go to, go to you, know, you know the area to go to. ProWrestlingTees.com slash WMS if you're new to this situation. Yes, thank you so much.